Um, okay. Denise Wheeler. Hi, right, Cliff Evans, Council Select Board. Thank you for coming. Katie, I'm Katie Lane, Crimes and Reporting Secretary. Galva Mansfield, I'm Derek Measurement. Sharon Wynne Fannin, Select Board Member. Jennifer Whitman, Member of the Cemetery Commission. Morning, the Nun, Cemetery Commission. Our new soon to be Sandra Ferber, Treasurer, Tax Collector, and soon to be Treasurer. I think you all know Judy, Town Clerk. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys. We're planning to meet with um, the Cemetery Commission, the school board, and there was one other group, just to keep the lines of communication open, mm -hmm. you know, things yep. like that. So that's really what this is just all about. Um, and your budget passed at town meeting. So that's a good thing. Well, I was sick. I didn't make it, so mm -hmm. no one told me I wasn't reelected, so I. Yes, you were. Yeah. In the <laughs> <laughs> you were. Fletcher appointed you, and we all said yes. Well, okay, good, good. I let them all well, know ahead of time that. <laughs> <laughs> that, that I would still do it. But yep, great. Just in case I was. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. Um, so I think there's been some question about like the workers' comp and nope. things like that, and we had this, a couple of cemetery commission. Not commissioners, but workers applied for a workers' comp because what happened is they did they worked for us and then they worked for a couple of other different places, so yeah. they're total yeah, they're unemployment. Yeah. So that makes them eligible to, for unemployment. We we never had unemployment claims before. We never had that. Yeah. It was quite a shock. Yeah, <laughs> and then we found out that also, I mean, it's all a learning process, but we found out that we don't have unemployment insurance to cover that, so we're now having to pay out of pocket. So now we do have it, but it doesn't, it's not retroactive. No, we're getting, paying pretty good for it too. Right? Yeah. No. I mean, Dallas has its share, mm -hmm. and the other two or whoever entities there are also have their share. Yeah. So hopefully they won't be unemployed for too long. Mm -hmm. um, and then there, there was a question about, you know, why did we put the cemetery budget on the on the warning, and it's because it's a whole, it's it's, yeah. it's your own budget. You know, you guys are elected like we are, and it's your own yeah. budget. Okay. Yeah. My only thing was that I thought that was confusing for the voters, mm -hmm. because if they didn't, I mean, we did explain it at town meeting, but if to go from looking, it was all, you know, right. tripled into the big budget, and then to see a big number, we were a little nervous that. Yeah, yeah, there was it all worked out. But it was all worked out. Right, but that's the way we were told. So now, it's, and now it'll forever Going or, forward, it'll be yeah. separate. And I know I th we did include it one time or two times in our budget, and then we found out, oh no, it's a separate budget. It needs to be voted on separately. So that, that's well, the We change. always went to the select board and they helped us out. And right. Yeah. We wanted. Okay. So, um,. Let's see, workers' comp, and I think Donna sent out an explanation, I think, that you guys all got about how the workers' comp is um, figured. Yep, she did. Yeah. She, uh, so that was where it'd be about $1,300 or something like that. Right, yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, um, $1,350 or something. Yep. And, you know, it, as was explained, the $49,000 includes the special projects, which yep. before we kind of had that piece separate, separate. Yep. but now it's all included in the same budget. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so I think that was an issue that the cemetery mm -hmm. commissioners raised about it, you know, that's why it's gone. Mm -hmm. In 2015 it was like 28,000, now it's up to 49. So I think we should, I would hope that you would think about looking to get some bids on the work for the commissioner yeah. for the We've cemeteries? Done, uh, quite a lot of work in the cemeteries uh, since uh, two years ago when they started. Uh, we started by washing that stone at the uh, Robinson Cemetery. Right. We just did a small project and then we went on with the, uh, the next year. We did the, I think it was 2013 when we started. And uh, the next year we went into uh, Robinson and finished it off, which was, I think, the 14th, uh, 2014. Right, but it's but you're still asking for the 14 
every year. Go you have been asking for that 14 every year going forward. Yep. So yeah, we we, we are totally looking yep. at all options, and we feel mm -hmm. like we that the system that we're in right now we feel like is not sustainable. I a couple sheets here if you want to look at them. I don't know. Um. Put out the budget plan. Yeah, I, I was just going to listen to what Jennifer had to say. And we have been calling around. We we feel like we really got locked in for this with our sexton, where every year we had to pay more, and then we switched how we paid them, and that kind of threw us all for a week. Right. Um, so we are looking at different ways. We looked at some other towns. We talked to Worcester. Um, and we are. The thing that's hard is that, obviously, we have to plan ahead, so it's too late for this coming year to do that. Um, but for the following year, we want to try to do, to do, to do, too late to do what? Hey, Jennifer. Um, do try to put it out to bid or try to find a different arrangement because the way that we have it set up for right now the for the maintaining the cemetery. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Like there's a, yeah, because this year it's kind of already about ready to start. Right. But it's already been approved. Right. Like starting in May is when everything begins. Yeah. yeah. Okay, John. Thank oh, okay. You. So it's too late for this year. What's yeah. the What is the? What is so? Maybe that means we should be talking, talking to you guys again in the fall. In the fall, yeah, yep. Because we have um, Randy talked to the person who's doing the Worcester, and he just, you know, doesn't. Mm -hmm. And that's where we get into this whole. Then do we go back to having a, you know, are they an employee or are they a subcontractor? Like it switched, right, for us. Um, and we would like to save money. Ideally, to go back to the subcontractor situation right. would be a benefit to the town if we're allowed to do that. I think you are if you go out to bid. Yeah. And their um, contract, you know, their their own company, like yeah, like you know how you see these lawn mowing companies. And yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Companies. Right. This is what we uh, propose to do with our remaining budget what, for this year. Do you, have, do you have extras of this, John? Uh, do I make a couple of them here? That would be great, uh, too. Thanks, Judy. Judy will make us copy. Oh, oh, sorry. Cutting <laughs> you off. Uh, right. Here's what I want to make it pass around right here. And part of the other, the other part of the big expenses is that there were so much, so many years of deferred maintenance, so we're trying to get caught up. But we still don't to like yeah. how much the price is going up. Sure. I felt like yeah, I didn't it's... get communicated very well at town meeting. I was going to say something at the end of town meeting, but it was like everyone went to lunch and right, and it was already um, passed. So right, already passed. So we didn't. Make, but I just I wanted to say that we're not just like oh let's just keep you know right. more money. It's like we're like what is going on? This is getting so expensive. Right, and I guess part of the issue that's come up is the. Administrative fee that's paid to Wyatt, the $2,400, what does he do with that? I mean, what does he do for that? He uh, comes to our meetings and he does put together spreadsheets every oh, meeting sorry. that we uh, do. He puts them together? Or his mom does. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever, okay. Well, well, and she must get that information from someone. That includes he, all his, his sexton work, you know, meeting with, with people who are buying. Mm -hmm. And people do, Lots yeah, people do call him, like his number is on the okay. website. Oh, are these all? Well, but that is, so, but that is, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm so I'm glad, I'm glad you guys are looking at that. Oh, yeah, we're looking okay. at all of that. Good. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe you would. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it does, I mean, it does seem like a lot. Did you want copies? <coughs> or, yeah. when he's already getting paid. Mm -hmm. Right, and then we, yeah, and then, money. right, and then, a lot of it is, you know, really hard for us to parse, like with the equipment hire, mm -hmm. to actually know where the money's actually going. This can be yeah. Changing. Well, and then we got that equipment hire stuff all broken down. So this is five dollars, and this yeah. is ten dollars mm -hmm. for each piece of equipment. Right. That's why if it was somebody contracted, you wouldn't have any of that. No. Right. And I'm be sorry. A set amount. I I lost a little something in the in the paper passing around, but so twenty four hundred administrative is that is that flat? Or is it something? It is. So yeah. there's not. Yeah. yeah, he gets that. But we could ask. You could ask him to account for that. Right. right? Like a, like mm -hmm. switch yeah. to an. It, it is. We he really has, don't know he how. Did come how up with we didn't know if he kept track of the hours. Do you have this? Um, on? We don't know how many hours he puts in doing. Right. Hours. He, he did put that. together. Whenever that got passed, he did put together. A, he always has spreadsheets that shows mm -hmm. his estimates on everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And does he know that you're going to be looking to get other estimates? Or uh, are you going to? Yeah. No, he, that's a, that's a 
pol politically challenging mm -hmm. thing because, mm -hmm. um, you know, he's emotionally invested in, in mm -hmm. his sure. job. Yeah, and sure yeah, and we don't, you know, we don't want to, him to feel like we're not thankful for the work that he's done. Mm -hmm. But it also feels like we, he. I got our oh, remaining yes. budget yeah. here. Uh, everybody got a copy now. Yeah. Uh, the budget of forty-nine thousand for seventeen and eighteen. We spent as of uh, eleven three seventeen twenty thousand thirty-three dollars and seventy-five cents. The remaining funds were twenty-eight thousand nine hundred sixty-six twenty-five. So why is there remaining funds? Okay. Spent it. We're still in that year, June so, yeah. up until May 1. Uh, okay. July. Okay. July so, uh, the 2018 spring, when, when we can get into the cemeteries, we're going to do a mowing and re uh, for about, uh, I think it's three months. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to do May and uh, in June. When they open the cemetery, and then we got June and uh, all of June. Okay. So the remaining funds we're going to do more routine uh, maintenance, uh, ten thousand five hundred for the three months. Uh, the uh, necessary grave and lot repair. Uh, sometimes we have a sunken grave, so that means we got to buy some topsoil or stuff. To, Pack it up and flag and veteran flag markers and holders, uh, $750 there. That's something that we ended up with our budget. Uh, because, uh, I don't know. Where did it used to be? It used to come out of Dorothy Nail. Uh, the, um, yeah. oh, the woman's yeah, leaf corner. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so we've been doing it. Okay. Right. Uh, Bless you. And the flags are a dollar a piece, and uh, I think we have about uh, 500 to 600 of them. Yep. Wow. Uh, lot measuring and uh, corner markers insulation, $500. Uh, that's, uh, I think they're around $50 a piece. Okay, so $200. We were getting them from another granite company for $75 to four, but. They sold their business. I think they sold their business so they get rid of the inventory. Wow. Yeah. Uh, stone washing, old Fairview. Uh, mm -hmm. We're gonna. We haven't contacted the guy and tell him we gave him the quote yet. Uh, but there's there's uh, 990 stones between the old Fairview, uh, the, the old part and the new part in there. And uh, where is that? Say, where is that one from? That's on uh, the Marshfield Hellas Road. Okay. Yep. That's when it's on either uh, side. Yeah, it's on both sides of the road. Yep. That's our biggest cemetery, right? Yep. Yeah. The other cemetery, the other side of the road, is called New Fairview. Okay, so. Yeah. There's actually three lots there. And uh, I figured out from when we washed stones last time that it would cost $14 per stone at $990. Uh, 990 uh, stones. So it's $990 per stone? That's so $14 per no, no, it's for $14 water. per stone. And the bid there is, uh, uh, he wants uh, $15,000 for it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do half and half, OK? OK. On the old side. And then he wants $1,500 for the uh, middle part where the where the vault is. Okay. Yep. So that would be fifteen five, I think. Yes. Yeah. Now. Um, okay. Granite post. I saw you sent. We're going to buy a granite post for the uh, James. Uh, old James Cemetery. Okay. It's all torn down now. Uh, the posts are all out of there. Well, the posts are there. The wood ones. Uh, we're supposed to take delivery on that pretty quick. And I sent them what I could on it, so uh, they'd be uh, 120 bucks a piece, so it's $4,800. 48, yeah, 4800 yep. Okay. So that would leave us roughly 1216 25 left of mm -hmm. 
last year's budget, okay? And that's kind of for emergency or whatever happens there. Yeah, that's good. Cool. So, yeah. And what about the uh, unemployment? Is that's not figured into this? That we yeah. The unemployment that the town's paid out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I guess I'll have to remember Donna gets here unless Sandra knows how much the town's paid out for. Maybe it's under one of the Excel spreadsheets there, but liability and workers' comp. Um, you mean the last bill that we received? Yeah, how much we paid? That was, uh, I think it was five hundred and fifty dollars. This tab. Mm -hmm. So it's not listed on that one. Let me try the other file. It's, it's just the same file. Yes. And we have a cemetery has a reserve fund now, right? And didn't we create a reserve yeah. fund? Two years ago. So if there's any money left, that would yeah. go into yeah. that. She said she was getting a good deal because you haven't had very many claims. Right. Yeah, yeah I mean, this is the yeah. first time. Yeah. So we kind of <laughs> got caught with... I found out one thing that, I don't know, uh, when I called up Wyatt, he didn't know about it. And he said one of his men was working at National Life doing janitorial work. While claiming? Nights. So, I don't know if you're supposed to be doing that or not. No, you're not. No, not. no if you're, Well, you could, because you can earn a certain amount, right? Oh. But if you go over that amount, then... Well, and that... Why should, why we should go over the amount uh, for, for us? If he's working somewhere else, or adding his other wages into that, it sounds like. Yeah, I don't know how that... That sounds fair. No. no it should, should be just us, the problem. They should be backing out the difference of right. what he's making out there. And it should, you know, backing out the difference and then spreading that around to however many entities are paying some of the work um, unemployment. So, I mean, National Life, if they've hired him, they would have to be, you know, on the up and up about reporting his income. Well, unless it's a, a subcontracted janitorial right. service. Right. You know, like... Well, but all of that is is a the reason to have unemployment insurance and have somebody else handling it mm -hmm. because those things will become part of the the forms and the filters and the affidavit and whatever right. but while the town is paying we're probably not doing all of that yeah i don't know how how do these ski resorts and those places do it i wonder they do it through insurance yeah, so yeah. Many hours they, per have, person they have somebody whose business yeah, like, it yeah. is to yeah. Yeah. They have an HR chase, chase that all day. Right. They have an HR person that kind of is in charge of looking at all that stuff. But they also have the unemployment insurance, which we now have. But that doesn't help us with what we're dealing mm -hmm. with right now. Mm -hmm. Which in the <coughs> scheme of things isn't a huge amount of money. I mean, it, yeah, I but it's know. still. You know, there, I thought there was a change to the unemployment law where, when folks take jobs that are seasonal and they understand they're going to be unemployed every year on a regular basis. I wasn't very happy about that. There was, there was supposedly, because people were doing this, because they work at the ski areas, and then they would take off, oh, I'm unemployed, yeah. and they'd goof for a while. Right. And yeah. So I thought the legislature did something. There were some adjustments to the unemployment insurance law to address like, that. Yeah, um, like if we in our hours, certain, uh, I don't know if they, they did it or it passed. Or something like that. I we had written in our contract that you would not qualify for workman's comp in the cemetery workman's position. Workman's comp is different than I mean, unemployment. I mean, unemployment, sorry. And, mm -hmm. But it's, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, the loophole, we, it doesn't stand. Like, right. we didn't oh. get to, but we had, it had no teeth. Really? Right. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't. Which I don't mm -hmm. understand. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not. Again, yeah, another reason a, to be contractors. Was, yeah, it's, yeah. Right, it's, but it's, that's a creature of right. law you may not be able to right. say. Right, right. If you we contract just for the service, then it's not employees. Right, right, right. 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 But this okay. is coming after like a two year cycle of us getting told to put everybody as an employee. Right, so right. It's just because a little like, you know, right. we're, we're right. here. There's the backlash. Yeah, right. Well, and because we were told because of. Right. For liability, for liability reason, reason yeah. right? That this is what we should do. Not realizing, not knowing, and maybe this, what you're talking about, created this loophole. I don't know. 
Well, but what you said before, Denise, it's probably the process that leads up to and the understanding walking in, you know, whether you're an employee or an independent contractor. Again, mm -hmm. if we if we say we want to we want to we want a bid process, we want to take bids, we want to have it, we we want to in order to qualify to bid, you must do must bring your own equipment, you must, you must, you must have. Right. Um, and there's certain insurance requirements right. that they have to meet. They'll have insurance. Yeah, they'll yeah. have to have, they have, to have all that. Bonded. Right, and that's very, very arm's length. Right. Yeah. That's different than, I think, where we were a few years ago. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's just getting more and more complicated all the time, all this stuff, as we know. Well, but at the same time, when you can package that complexity into one contract and let somebody else handle it, you, right. you convert something that's complicated to manage for people who don't know what they're doing. But no offense, none of us do. You know, these are all these different problems. Than ours. Right, exactly. exactly, and that's what we want. We want yeah. to go back to being your problem. <laughs> well, that'd be nice. <laughs> um, <sighs> what else? God are the good old days. Let's make sure we take down every rope swing too. <laughs> what else? Set. I, I really um, like seeing the work that you're doing to uh, what's the, how were you guys talking about it at town meeting? You spent you really did a nice job of making the point that you're I'm gonna say cleaning up, but that's right. They've always been clean, but right, but refurbishing. They, they we're trying to bring them them back yeah. up to a greater state of grandeur. Well, Norma exactly. Norma. Norma. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. So they had for several years, you know. Yeah. Do you have a Do you have like an inventory of all the cemeteries in town and kind of a timeline for how that work is going to unfold? Mm -hmm. Because we, you talked about yeah. short yeah. Sort of, uh, okay. burials are and so forth. And well, Judy and Judy we have a number no. of acres there. No. Well, and Judy, I guess this, you, you folks bought one of the NEMRIC programs to yes. Yes. start inputting yes. data into yes. that so that you know where everybody's buried. Because right now, I think there's some kind yep. of it's I, questionable. I'm, I'm going to start working on you and, you and Fletcher, is it? Yes. You and Fletcher. Okay, you good. Now, right? I have, no, I haven't started it yet. Oh, okay. I think what you were asking was, After like, if the, is there, like, a way that we know how to sort of treat all of the cemeteries? Capital well, plan. Like, well, no, no, just, like, for maintenance, I think you mean. Well, no, I mean for the for the... Restoring to grandeur, yeah, process. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, the, yeah. so that so that people can say so that there's an answer. Oh well, they haven't done my cemetery, Terry. Well, okay, you're right. We, we everybody, knows. Right. Yeah. everybody knows this. Right. Everybody knows we have. That's, that's what I'm saying off the top of my head. But right. And that's what a capital that. plan would yeah. do. It would show, you know, mm -hmm. what year you plan to do. It's like the yeah, tree of the hedge at Old Fairview that was like neglected for years and years. Mm -hmm. Now we know that we're going to do it. We have the, a lot for that cost, and we're going to do it every other year or whatever each side. Mm -hmm. that's, so that's forever. So that's more. that's sustaining. So the now we know it's a constant yeah. process. So now it's, instead right. of just being like, oh no, with. no one's dealt with it for ten years. Now we we know like every year this is something that has to get attention. Um, right. And so Jen, there are cemeteries in town that haven't been done yet, though, right? That we're right. not seeing here. Right. So that's yeah. what I'm wondering is yeah. like the kind of master right. list of cemeteries mm -hmm. and the timeline for. Yeah, for we've done actually a pretty see. amazing job in the last couple of years hitting a benefit to each cemetery. Okay. We really spread it around. We don't just like do everything in one. Oh, okay. We do like a fence in one or washing in another or. Is that the is that the capital off. plan, John? This here is my uh, <laughs> or whatever estimate to do the cemetery for games. Okay. Yeah. And, oh, great. Uh, the yeah. the uh, Hutchins cemetery. That would be good to have. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I got five copies. You can read that. You have five copies? Yeah. Perfect. And uh, maybe oh, okay. another copy. Yeah. Then. So yeah. you'll just keep adding on to this kind of capital plan here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, and Judy had created a document for you guys to use for. All right. I think there's basically three initiatives that I'm really excited about and interested in. Um, one, well, one is uh, I know Wyatt has a lot of documents in his house, I guess, and he promised to, at, at some point, bring them here so we can centralize and make sure that all the important documents are in the vault or centralized and, mm -hmm. you know, not at risk, at sc scan something. Um, so that's an important project, um, getting NEMRIC um, so that we can start putting all that data into one uh, database for the cemetery information. I'm excited to get started on that. Yep, we have it, and I played with it just a little. 
And then there's the document for burial rights deeds. So that right. it's very clear who has the right to be buried where, and if that gets transferred, it's all in the land records. It's not sort of floating around in different files. Because right, they have to get reported in the land records, the plots, right? Um, they haven't been now, but I mean, they haven't been until now. Um, but they're supposed to be. It, the, hopefully the next one that's sold, the, the cemetery commissioners will be signing off on these deeds. So, and then they'll come here and be notarized and and, and record in the land records, or in some version of the records here. Yeah. Is that so? It's just is it? I have samples if you want. Yeah, to see no, that. Okay. yeah. Um, I think you showed me the. Yeah, it's just a one page. page. It's very yeah. simple. You know, straightforward. Right. This person is going to be in this lot. In this so cemetery. it gets recorded in the land records, and then it gets sent to the like a deed when it gets recorded for purchase of the um, lot. Um, I guess it would be. Uh, the original would get sent back to the, the person, person who, right. who the has owner. purchased it. So that they would have the original, mm -hmm. and we'd have a recorded document, and it would be a memoric, and we, you know, right. just no question. Yeah. Good. Well, I'm glad you guys are on top of that. That's great. Thank you, and Judy, for her help. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so we know we don't have, we can't this year look at an outside contractor, but let's. You know, if we can help in the fall, you know, we can get together and yeah. mm -hmm. talk about it or... So I guess I missed a why cannot, we not put out the Because they season. start work like in May. Mm -hmm. So the process is all done. Everyone's sort of... You already have uh, plans. Sorry, I'll look You already have it lined up. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so... Mm -hmm. So the next season they would put out RFPs mm -hmm. looking for... Mm -hmm. Right, well, that, that I was going to go there, too, Winita, mm -hmm. that that gives the folks who are doing the work now plenty of, also, Notice. plenty of time to, mm -hmm. right. you know, kind of organize themselves to do a bit. Yeah. yeah exactly. Right, yeah, and they could bid on it just as any, well as anybody mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. but, but you'll investigate potential service, you know, contractors, Yeah, right? we already are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. This year, not yeah. wait until... Yeah, yeah, right. oh, no, yeah. we already are. Yeah. Well, and you'll have to for a credible bid process. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, because then you have to, you know, you put it out the bid, you get all your bids in, then you, at one of your meetings you would open the, all the bids. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always have to be the lowest price. No. The best overall. Yeah, yeah. yeah like we get bids for the stone washing and all that, and we have to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're on our home stretch, actually, on the cemeteries. Uh, we got uh, one that has granite posts now with a chain link fence, uh, oh. which is Angel. Uh, we're working on uh, the James Cemetery, which will be uh, this spring, hopefully. Yeah, this year. I want to get it done before uh, Mr. Geisler's grave there is done, so again. Mm -hmm. uh, Rick Geisler is going to be buried up there by his wife in July, I think it is. Hmm. Okay, so. And uh, so, so have you we've got up? the short cemetery done, and that's done. Yeah. Once these are done, we aren't going to have to pay for posts, or, you know, wooden right. posts or boards or anything. Well, once um, you're caught up on maintenance, right. then it's so much easier, just like yeah. cleaning your house, you know? Yeah. You keep up with it? Mm -hmm. it's a lot easier. That's the theory. Yeah, right. <laughs> Who keeps up with it? Yeah. <laughs> it's always easier said than done. Uh, yeah. The stones all been washed in uh, West Church, uh, Ainsworth, Short. Yeah, we also did that, um, yep. the Bliss Cemetery, which is a neglected little cemetery, it's one that's dear to my heart, is that we call it the Children's Cemetery. Mm -hmm. um, we also did a cleanup day there Where is that spring. Is that the behind one that Susan Weber was concerned about? No, 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 that was um, Jane's. Jane's, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is it Gail Graham? Yeah. It's on Gail Graham. It's on Gail Graham. Graham. It's actually it kind of belongs to her. Oh. There's a tree right in the middle. Of the but it's tree. actually the oldest cemetery in town. And it used to be walkable to where the school was, and on May Day, the kids would bring flowers to it. Oh, um, yeah. 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 Uh, so the kids at the, um, the Pekin the School would walk up to mm. it. Yeah. Uh, it's right near my house, just down the road. Okay. So do we have anything else you want to talk about? Mm -hmm. Judy? John, Donna, Sandra, any questions, comments? I was sorry to see that Jonathan was moving on. Yes. I felt like he was, a, he was helping yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, was, yeah. he was a good asset. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So here we are again. 
But we are actively looking. Yeah. Oh, good. We'll be advertising for you. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. All righty then. Good. Great place to work. Good awesome. benefits. Good benefits. Amazing people. Mm -hmm. Nice setting. Is that the job that Stephanie used to have? Oh, maybe. Yeah. Mm, so would like somebody like to make a motion to adjourn the cemetery commissioners meeting? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right. Mm -hmm. We're good to go. And Katie's taking minutes, so you guys mm -hmm. didn't have to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for what you're doing. It's really nice to meet you. Yeah. I probably met you before. <laughs> it's really nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. All right. It's weird to not be here. All right. So moving on. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Very informative. Now, I'm all, now I want to go on a cemetery tour. I know, I know. I've yeah. never done it. Go on a tour of the cemeteries and yeah. look at the stones. Yeah. And we do that? We yeah. probably do. Like, when you're ready, yeah. Is there a yeah. It's like during yeah. fall foliage or something. Yeah. Is there one? Well, there should I be. Know, we there should. should be. It could be at night and it could be a fundraiser. Oh. It's hard to see. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I want to ask details about the doors. Right. You know? The fun. Yeah, right. It's, no, it's true. You wouldn't be able to see the stones. Yeah. Do your rubbings. Yeah. All righty, folks. Ready to get the select board. Happy birthday. You know? The fun. Yeah, right. No, it's true. You wouldn't be able to see the stones. Yeah. Do your rubbings. Select board. Happy birthday. You know? The fun. Yeah, right. No, it's true. You wouldn't be able to see the stones. Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday. You know? The fun. Yeah. It's, no, it's true. You wouldn't be able to see the stones. Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday. You know? The fun. Yeah. It's no, it's true. You wouldn't be able to see the stones. Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday. You know? The fun. Yeah. It's no, it's true. You wouldn't be able to see the stones. Yeah. No, it's true. You wouldn't be able to see the stones. Yeah. It's no, it's true. You wouldn't be able to see the stones. Yeah. It's no, it's true. You wouldn't be able to see the stones. Yeah.
You know your own degrees. Sit down. At the first and last, the hearty one. Thanks to your majesty. Our self will mingle with society and play the humble host. Our hostess keeps her state, but in best time, we will request her welcome. Pronounce it for me, sir, to all our friends. For my heart speaks, they are welcome. See, they encounter me with their hearts, thanks. But we are even on both sides. Here, I'll sit in the midst. Be large in mirth. Anon, we'll drink a measure at the table round. <coughs> There's blood on my face. His bangles are better on thee without than he within. Is he dispatched? My lord, his throat is cut. That I did for him. Thou art the best of the cutthroats. Yet, he's good that did the like for banquet, for lights. Thou didst it. Thou art the non well, Most royal, sir. Flans estate. Comes my fit again. I had else been perfect. Whole is the marble, bounded is the rock, as broad and general as the casing air. But now I am cabined, cribbed, confined, bound in by saucy doubts and fears. But Benko is safe. I, my good lord, safe in a ditch he bides, with twenty trenching dashes on his head, the least of which a death to age us. Thanks for that. There the grown serpent lies. Worm that's fled. That nature, that in time, then will breed. No teeth for the present. Get thee gone. Tomorrow, we'll hear ourselves again. My royal lords, you do not give the cheer. Uh -huh. The feast is sold that is not often vouched while tis a making. Tis given with welcome. To feed were best at home. From thence the sauce to meat is ceremony. Meeting were bare without it. Sweet remembrance, sir. Now, good digestion, weight on health, and health on both. May it please your highness. Sit. Here have you now our country's honor roofed with a grace person of our thankful present, who may we challenge rather for unkindness than pity for this chance. His absence, sir, lays blame upon his promise. Uh, please, it, your highness, to grace us with your royal company. The table's full. Here's a place reserved, sir. Where? Uh, here, sir. <laughs> what is it that moves your highness? <laughs> Which of you have done this? and extend his passion. Feed and regard him not. Are you a man? Ah, to the bold one that dares look upon that which might have all the devil. Papa, stop. This is the very painting of your fear. This is the air-drawn dagger which you said led you to Duncan. Oh, flaws and starts, imposters to true fear, would well become a woman
said here. I'm sorry. Fight for shame. Tired. I think that when the brains were out, the man would die. And there it is. But now the rising of 20 golden murders on the ground. And rise again. My real lord. such a murderers. Your noble friends do lack you. Oh. I do forget. <laughs> Do not amuse it with my most worthy friends. I have a strange infirmity, which is nothing to those that know me. Come, love and help to all. Uh, then I'll sit down. Give me some wine. Bill for me. I drink to the general joy of the whole table. And to our dear friend Banquo, whom we miss, would he were here. To all, and him we thirst, and all to all. Our duties and the flesh. Fuck, you my sight! Let the air find thee! Thy blood is cold, thy bones are marvelous. Sisters, nor shall they speak. But now I am bound to know by the worst means worst. For mine own good, all causes shall give way. I am in blood, stepped in so far that should I wade no more, returning would be as tedious as go more. 
strange thing that I have in head. That will to hand. Which must be acted ere they may be scared. You lack the season of all natures. Please. Come. Will to sleep. My strange and ill use is the fear that wants hard use. We are yet young indeed. of war. Sent he to himself? He did. And with an absolute sir, not I. The cloudy messenger turns his back and hums, as who should say, rue the time that clogs me with this answer. Well, that might advise him to a caution, to hold what distance his wisdom can provide. Some holy angel fly to the court of England and unfold his message ere he come, that a swift blessing may soon return to this our suffering country under a hand accursed. I'll send my prayers with him. Double toil and trouble, fire burned and cauldron 
And live in the dust. What need I fear of thee? But yet I'll make a short and stubble shore and take upon the fate when thou shalt not live. And I may tell pale hearted fear it lies and sleep in spite of thunder. What is this that rises like the issue of a king? Wears upon his baby brow the run and top of sovereignty. Listen, but speak not to it! Be thy metal proud and show no care. Who chase, who frets, or where conspirers are. Macbeth shall never vanquished be. Until great Burnham Wood to high Dunstanane Hill shall come against him. That shall never be! Who can impress the forest, beat the tree, unfix his earth-bound root? Smell the bold men's good. Rebellious dead rise never till the wood of Burnham rise, and our high place Macbeth shall live a lease of nature, pay his breath to time and mortal custom. But my heart throbs to know one thing. Tell me if thy art can tell so much. Shall Banquo's issue ever reign in this kingdom? Seek to know no more! I will be satisfied! Deny me this, and an eternal curse fall on you! To England? Aye, my good lord. Oh, 
mind now anticipates my dread exploits. Flaming purpose is never or took unless the deed go with it. But from this moment, the very first things of my heart shall be the first things of my head. And even now, to crown my thoughts with acts, be it thought and done. The castle of Macduff will I surprise. Seems a fight. Give to the edge of the sword his wife, his babes, and all unfortunate souls that trace him in his line. No more boasting like a fool. This deed I'll do before this purpose cool. No more sights. Where are these gentlemen? Come bring me where they are. You know not whether it was his wisdom or his fear. Wisdom? To leave his wife? To leave his babes? To, to leave his mansion and his titles in a place where once himself is fly? He loves us not. Ooh. Ooh. He wants the natural touch. For the poor wren, the most diminutive of birds, will fight her young ones in her nest against the owl. All is the fear and nothing is the love. As little as the wisdom, when the flight so runs against all reason. Oh, my dearest Kaz, I pray you school yourself. But for your husband, he is noble, wise, judicious, and best knows the fits of the season. I dare not speak much further. But cruel are the times when we are traitors and do not know ourselves. When we hold rumor for what we fear, yet know not what we fear, but float upon a wild and violent sea, each way and none. I take my leave of you. You shall not be long till I'll be here again. Things at the worst will cease, or else climb up to what they were before. My pretty cousin, blessing upon you. Father, he is, and yet he's fatherless. I am so much a fool. Should I stay longer, it would be my disgrace and your discomfort. I take my leave at once. And what will you do now? How will you live? Birds do, mother. What? With worms and flies? With what I get, I need. You can serve you there. Poor bird. Thou next never fear the net nor line, the pitfall nor the snare. Why should I, mother? Poor birds, they are not set for. My father is not dead for all of your sake. Yes, he is dead. How wilt thou do for a father? Nay, how wilt thou do for a husband? <laughs> Why, I can buy me twenty in any market. Then you'll buy and sell again. Thou speaks with all thy wits, and yet in faith, with wits enough for thee. Was my father a traitor, mother? Aye, that he was. Where is a traitor? Why, one that swears and lies. And be all traitors that do so? Everyone that does so is a traitor and must be hanged. Who must hang them? Why, the honest men. Then the liars and swears are fools, for they are liars and swears enough to beat the honest men and hang up them. Oh, no. God help thee, poor monkey. But how is that for our father? If you were dead, you'd weep for him. If you were not, it were a good sign that I should quickly as a new father. <laughs> Poor Crashler, how thou talkst. Bless you, fair lady. I am not you know, but in your state of honor I am perfect. I fear some danger doth approach you nearly. If you will take an old woman's advice, be not found here. Hence with your little ones. The fright you thus me thinks I am too savage. To do worse to you have felt cruelty, which is to nigh a person. Heaven protect you. I dare abide no longer. Whither should I fly? I have done no harm. Yes, I remember now. I am in this earthly world where 
To do harm is often laudable. To do good sometimes it kind of dangerous folly. Why then, alas, do I put up that womanly defense and say, I have done no harm. What are these faces? Where is your husband? I hope in no case so unsanctified or such as thou mayst find him. He's a traitor. Thou what? Thou shag, you villain. What? You, egg. <laughs> you cry, treachery. Got some desolate shame. There weep our sad bosoms empty. Let's rather hold fast the mortal sore. And like good men, bestride our downfallen birth. It's no more new widow's howl. New orphans cry. New sorrows strike heaven in the face that it resounds as if it felt with Scotland. Yelled out like syllable daughter. Would I believe I'll lay out, but no believing. When I can redress as I shall find the time to find, I will. What you have spoke, it may be so perchance. This tyrant, whose sole name blisters our tongue, was once thought honest. You loved him well. He hath not touched you yet. I am not treacherous. But Macbeth is. That which you are, my thoughts cannot transpose. Though all things foul would wear the brows of grace, yet grace must still look so. I have lost my hopes. Perchance even there where I did find my doubts. Why? In that rawness left you wife and child. Those prejudiced motives, those strong knots of love, without leave taking. You may be rightly just whatever I shall think. Bleed. Bleed, poor country. Great tyranny laid all thy base assured, but goodness dare not check thee. Fare thee well, Lord. For not be the villain thou thinkst for the whole kingdom in the tyrant's grasp, and the rich east to boot. Be not offended. I speak not as an absolute out of you. I think our country sinks beneath the yoke. It weeps, it bleeds, and each new day a gash is added to her wounds. I think withal there would be hands uplifted in my right. And here, from gracious England, have I offered goodly thousands. But for all this, when I shall tread upon the tyrant's head or wear it on my sword, yet my poor country will have more vices than it had before, more suffer in more sundry ways than ever by him that shall succeed. What should he be? It is myself, I mean, in whom I know all the particulars of vice so grafted that when they shall be opened, black Macbeth will seem as pure as snow, and the poor stay esteem him as a lamb being compared with my confinement's arms. Not enough. Legions of horrid hell could become a devil more damned in evils to top Macbeth. I grant him bloody, luxurious, avaricious, false, deceitful, sudden, malicious. Smacking of every sin that has a name. Oh, but there's no bottom, none in my voluptuousness. Your wives, your daughters, your matrons and your aunts could not fill up the cistern of my lust. And my desire? All restraining impediments would or bear that did oppose my will. Better make best than such an one to reign. Boundless intemperance in nature is a tyranny. 
but fear not yet to take upon you what is yours. We have willing dames enough. There cannot be that vulture in you to devour so many as will to greatness dedicate themselves, finding it so inclined. And yet there is, in my most ill-composed affection, such an avarice that were I king, I should cut off the nobles for their lands. Desire his jewels in others' house, and my more heaven would be a sauce to make me hunger more. That I should force quarrels and just with the good and loyal, destroying them for wealth. This avarice sticks deeper, grows with more pernicious root than summer seeming lust. But do not fear. All these are bearable with other graces, ways, but I have none. The king becoming graces is justice, verity, temperance, stableness, empty, perseverance, mercy, loveliness, <laughs> devotion. Patience, courage, fortitude. I take no relish in any of them, but crown the variety of each subtle pride, acting it in many ways. Nay, had I power, I would pour the sweet milk of conquered into hell, uproar the universal peace, confound all unity on earth. Scotland, Scotland. If such a one be fit to govern, speak. I am as I have spoken. Fit to govern? No, not to live. Oh, a nation miserable with an untitled tyrant, bloody scepter. When shalt thou see thy wholesome days again? Since the fairest issue of thy throne, by his own interdiction, stands a curse and does blaspheme his breed. My father was a most sainted king. The mother, queen, that bore thee, often upon her knees and on her feet, died every day she lived. Fare thee well. These evils I repeat upon myself have banished me from Scotland. Oh, my breast, my hope ends here! Macduff, this dole passion to held in integrity hath from my soul wiped the black scruples, reconciled my thoughts to thy good truth and honor. Devilish Macbeth by many of these tricks hath sought to win me into his power, but God above deal between thee and me. And even now I put myself to thy direction, and speak my own detraction, hear of jewel the taints and blames I laid upon myself, for strangers to my nature. I am yet unknown to woman, never was forsworn. Scarcely a coveted what was mine own. At no time broke my faith. Would not betray the devil to his fellow, and delight no less in truth than in life. What I am truly is thine and my poor country's to command. Whither indeed, before the here approach, old Seward with 10,000 warlike men already at the point was setting forth. Now, let's together, and the chance at goodness be like our warranted quarrel. Why are you silent? Sorry, welcome and unwelcome things at once. It's hard to reconcile. We'll see who comes here. My ever gentle cousin, welcome hither. Stand Scotland where it did. Alas, poor country, almost afraid to know itself. It cannot be called our mother, but our grave, where violent sorrow seems a modern ecstasy. The dead man's now is there scarce asked for who, and good men's lives expire before the flowers in their caps, dying wherever they sit. What's the newest grief? Each minute teems a new one. How does my wife? Why, well. And all my children? Well, too. 
The tyrant had not battered at their peace. No, they were well at peace when I did leave. Be not a miser of your speech. How goes it? When I came hither to transport the tidings which I have heavily borne, there ran a rumor of many worthy fellows that were up in arms. Your eye in Scotland would create soldiers, make our women fight to doff their dire distresses. Be at their comfort we are coming thither. Gracious England hath lent us good soup and ten thousand men. An older and a better soldier, none that Christendom gives out. Would I could answer this comfort with light. But I have words that would be howled out in the desert air where hearing should not latch them. What, what concern they? The general cause? Or some single breast? No mind that's honest, but in it shares some woe of the main part pertains to you alone. It would be mine. Keep it not from me, quickly, let me have it. Let not your ears despise my tongue forever, which shall possess them with the heaviest sound that ever yet they knew. Oh, I guess I did. Your castle is surprised. Your wife and babes savagely slaughtered. To relate the matter were on the quarry of these murdered deer to add the death of you. What, man? Merciful heaven, give sorrow words. The grief that does not speak bids, bids the oar for heart and bids it break. Children, children. Wife, children, servants, all that could be found. Not must be from thence. My wife killed too. I have said. Be comforted. Let's make us medicines of our great revenge. Cure this deadly grief. He has no children. Oh, my pretty ones. Did you say all? Oh, help, Cory! Oh! What? All oh, my pretty chickens in their dam at one fell swoon. Dispute it like a man. Oh, I shall do so. I must also feel it as a man. I cannot but remember such things were that were most precious to me. Did heaven the garden would not take their part? See, for me, not you were all struck for thee. Not that I am, not for their own demerits, but for mine. They'll slaughter on their souls. Heaven rest them now. Be this the west turn to thy sword. Let grief convert to anger. Blunt not the heart and rage it. Oh, I could play the woman with mine eyes and the braggart with my tongue. But gentle heavens, cut short all intuition. Front to front, bring out the speed of Scotland and myself. Within my blades might set him. If he shake, heaven forgive him too. This tune grows manly. Come, go we to the king. Our power is ready. Our lack is nothing but our leave. Macbeth is ripe for shaking, and the powers above put on their instruments. To see what cheer you may. The night is long that never finds the day. I have two nights watched with you, but can perceive no truth in your report. When was it that she last walked? Since as bad as the earth has been in the field, I have seen a rise from her bed. Throw upon herself her nightgown, unlock her closet, take forth paper, fold it, write upon it, read it, afterwards seal it, return it to her closet, and return it to her bed, all the while in the most fast sleep. Oh, great perturbation <coughs> in nature to receive at once the benefit of sleep and do the effect of watching. In this slumbery agitation, besides her walking and other actual performances, what at any time have you heard her say? That's sure which I will not report after her. <laughs> 
You may to me, as most of me you should. Neither to you nor to anyone, since I have no witness to confirm my report. A lawyer, here she comes. This is her very guise. And upon my word, fast asleep. Observe her, you're close. You see her eyes are open. Aye, but their sense is shut. What is it she does now? Look how she rubs her hands. This is an accustomed action with her. You see me lost washing her hands. I have seen her continue this a quarter of an hour. She speaks, I will set down what comes from her to satisfy my remembrance the more strongly. Oh, damn spot! Oh, my thing! One. Two. Why then? It's time to do it! Hi, my lord. The soldier and the fear. What need we fear who knows it when none may call our power to account? And yet, who would have thought the old man had had so much blood in him? Do you want that? In the fight, I will work. Where is she now? What? Well, these hands now will be clean. No more of that. My lord, no more of that. You mourn all with this starting. Go to, go to. You have known you should not. She has told her she should not. I'm sure of that. Heaven knows what she has known. <laughs> their secrets. More needs she than the vine than the physician. 
God. God forgive us all. But look at her. Remove from her all the means of annoyance and still keep eyes upon her. For good night. Mine eyes she has perplexed and amazed my sight. I think I cannot speak. Good night, good doctor. The English power is near. Let on by Malcolm, his uncle Stuart, and the good of his doctor. Revenges burns in them for their dear cause, which the bleeding of the grim alarm excite the mortified man. Near, Bur near Burnham Wood shall we well meet them. That way are they coming. I have a file of all the gentry. There is Seward's son and many unruff youths that even now protest their first of manhood. What says the tyrant? Great Dunsinane, he strongly fortified. Some say he's mad, others that lesser hate him do call it valiant fury. But for certain, he cannot buckle his distempered cause within the belt of rule. Now does he feel his secret murder sticking on his hands. Now minutely revolts upbraid his deep breach. Those he commands move only in command, nothing in love. Now does he feel his title hang loose about him. Like a giant's robe upon a dwarfish thief. <laughs> <laughs> Who then can blame his pestered senses to recoil and start when all that is within him does condemn itself for being there? Well, march we on to give obedience where it is truly owed. Meet we the medicine of the sickly wheel, and with him pour we in our country's purge each drop of us. Or so much as it needs to dew the sovereign flower and drown the weeds. Make we our march towards Burnham. Bring me no more reports. Let them fly on. Till Burnham would be kind of dancing in. I cannot take your fear. What? The boy Malcolm, was he not born of woman? The spirits that know all more of consequences have pronounced me thus. Be not snake bed. No man born of woman shall e'er have power upon thee. Then fly false things and mingle with the English epicures. The mind I sway by and the heart I bear shall never stand without nor shape and fear. The devil damn me, black thou cream faced loon! Where got thou that deuce? Look! There is ten thousand geese, villain! Soldiers, sir! Girl! Prick thy face and overread thy fear, thou lean ever boy! Black soldiers, patch! Death of thy soul! Those linen cheeks of thine are counselors to fear. What soldiers? Way face! The English force, so please you. Take thy face hence. Satan! I am sick at heart when I behold. Satan, I say! This push. Cheer me up, Emperor. Deceit me now. I have lived long enough. My way of life has fallen into the seer, the yellow leaf, and that which should accompany old ages honor, love, obedience, troops of friends. I must not look to have, but in their stead, curses. Not loud, but deep. Mouth on her, breath, which the poor heart would fain deny and dare not. Satan! What is your gracious pleasure? What news more? All is confirmed, my lord, which has been reported. I have a fight till from my bones my flesh be hacked. Give me my arm. Tis not needed. I'll put it on. Send out more horses. Scour the country round. Hand those that talk of fear. Get me my armor! Doctor, how does thy patient? Not so to say, my lord, as she is troubled with thick coming fancies that disturb her rest. Cure her of that. Canst thou not minister to a mind disease? Pluck from the memory a, a rooted sorrow. Raise out the written troubles of the brain, and with some sweet, oblivious antidote, cleanse that stuffed breast of that perilous stuff. 
which weighs upon the heart? Therein the patient must minister to himself. Don't visit to the dock, I'm mad at Come, put on my arm. Come on. Give me my belt. Satan, get it out. Why do the things fly from me? Come, sir, dispatch. If thou couldst, Doctor, cast the water of my land, find its disease, purge it to uh, uh, firm and, and pristine health. Take off this. I would applaud thee to the very echo. That would applaud thee again. What rhubarb, a senna, or what primitive drug can scour the English heads? Gives no of them? Aye, my good lord, your royal preparation makes us hear something. Bring it after me. I will not be afraid of death and pain till Burnham Forest come to Dunsinane. Cry from Dunsinane, away and clear. Prophet again should hardly draw me here. <laughs> Tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time, and all our yesterdays have lighted fools. The way to dusty death. Out. Out. Brief candle. Shadow. A poor player who struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying. Nothing. Thou 
claims to use thy tongue, thy story quickly. Gracious my lord, I should report that which I say I saw, but no matter how to say it. <laughs> say! As I did stand my watch upon the hill, I looked for Burner, and anon we thought, the wood began to move. <laughs> Liar and say! Let me into your wrath if it be not so. Within this three miles, you may see it coming. I say, a moving grove. If thou speakst false, upon the next tree shalt thou hang alive till famine clean thee. If this speech be sooth, I care not if thou dost for me as much. I pull in resolution and begin to doubt the equivocation of the fiend that lies like truth. Fear not till burning wood do come to Dunsinane. And now a wood comes toward Dunsinane. I am an act. If this which she about to does appear, there is no flying hence or tarrying here. I begin to be a weary of the sun. I wish the estate of the world were now undone. Bring me the Laura Barrow! The wind come back! At least we die with hearts on our back! I have avoided thee. 
My soul is too much charged with blood of thine already. I have no words. My blood voices in my blade, the bloodier villain. Ah!
Wait on the front. All right then. God's soldier be he. Had I as many sons as I have hairs, I could not wish him to a fair and death. And so, his nil is no. He's worth more sorrow, and that I'll spend on him. He's worth no all. They say he parted well and paid his score. So God be with him. Here comes newer comfort. Hail, King. So thou art. The time is free. I see thee compassed with thy kingdom's pearl, who speak my salutation in their minds, whose voices I desire aloud with mine. Hail, King of Scotland! Hail, King, King, King of, of Scotland! Scotland! We shall not be long before we reckon with your several loves and make us even with you. My thanes and kin, henceforth be earls. The first that ever Scotland in such an honor named. What's more to do which would be planted newly with the time, as calling home our exiled friends abroad that fled the snares of watchful tyranny, producing forth this, these cruel ministers of this dead butcher, this fiend-like queen, who as his thought by self and violent hands took off her life. This, and what needful else we are called upon to do by the grace of grace, we will perform in measure, time, and place. So, thanks to all at once, and to each one, whom we invite to see us crowned at school. Hooray!